So this is really a spillover from the coup that Mr. Draghi did uh, late summer. Basically, he said that the euro was irreversible, that he was going to do what it takes for it to push higher. Um, the promise to be able to do the OMT without actually delivering it, that was a huge boost. And that took us to November, when uh, after Obama won and risk aversion set in, U.S. stocks came down, the global stocks came down, but the euro metrics, the euro currency, fell by less than, uh, fell by less than uh, equity markets fell. And the yields bounce in the eurozone and the periphery went up by a mere 3%. So basically the decline uh, in the euro metrics was actually uh, more modest than the decline in risk appetite in emerging markets and so on and so forth. Uh, this call or, or this move is not only and what has a lot of, uh, uh, a, lot of uh, a, a lot of the power in it is not only US dollar driven but it's actually euro driven. So we think that 135 is just on the way and we think we really we're going to go towards uh, uh, 140. Financial markets have got the bit between their teeth. Yes. Yields are coming lower, currencies going higher. The data right. isn't pretty. The data is not uh, pretty, uh, but the data did not always uh, uh, mirror uh, uh, the financial markets or vice versa. And it's the good old argument basically, are the markets a lagging indicator or the leading indicator? If you look at the IFO in Germany, yep. if you look at the ZEW uh, in uh, the Germany, 32 month highs there, we have the expectations component of these numbers. Basically people forward looking, they are expecting the markets to push higher. But the coincident indicator or the business the climate is not as hot or is not as, as big, but it is actually going uh, gone. Uh, today we're going to get the speech or the policy from the Fed. They're going to continue with the $85 billion. They're going to continue to tell you that interest rates are going to be low until the end of 2014. That is going to basically maintain the status quo. But the most important call is that the ECB is the only central bank of the major basically central banks that has its balance sheet coming down by 5% from June. The BOJ, the BOE and the Fed, their balance sheets all went up between 5% and 15% since the summer. But the ECBs went actually down and with the repayment of the LTRO you're taking some of the excess liquidity. It's tiny. It's tiny. No, but sorry, it's tightening. They are tightening. It, it is, exactly. It is a tightening and we know the currency market, it's a relative play. And basically when you are doing the tightening and the rest of the central banks are basically easing or injecting, there is another one of the many reasons that is uh, uh, pushing the euro higher. Ashraf, what is it going to take? I know, so your forecast is 140 for euro dollar by the end of the year, I imagine. Right? Actually, no, no, we, we could see 140 at in, the, in the beginning of the second quarter. All right, so in the next couple of months. But what will it take for euro to be lower? Let's say Spain can't fund itself privately, that Spain needs to access that money, that suddenly the fundamentals, we realize that we're going to be in a recession for a much longer time. Then do you change your call on euro dollar? Lack of confidence in the Italian elections, uh, basically renewed uh, pressures on Spain uh, to maintain uh, uh, the austerity there, uh, maybe some troubles with the banks, and then we, we may have what you call the verbal stuff. We maybe have some people from the ECB or uh, Mr. Jean-Claude Juncker, who is not from the ECB, saying that maybe the euro is artificially overvalued. Uh, but I think one of the other things may not to do, may not have anything to do with the euro. Maybe we could see the Federal Reserve basically uh, saying instead of uh, continuing to inject 45 billion plus uh, 40 billion, they will do less in the beginning of the year. So the easing of the Fed may be less, and that could take away a little bit from the euro.